Hi! In today's video, we will take a look at how to measure the passband characteristics of filters and oscillators' resonant frequencies using a spectral analyzer. For this type of measurement, we typically utilize a tracking generator in conjunction with a spectral analyzer. But I don't have a tracking generator for my HP 8566B spectral gen uh, analyzer, at least not yet. So, in order to measure the frequency response of a filter, I will illustrate the manual frequency sweep technique. So before we continue, uh, I wanted to show you the uh, test jig that we'll be using today. So here is a, just a simple uh, circuit board that has the uh, device under test, and right now it's a 10.7 uh, megahertz crystal filter. Uh, so it's mounted on this uh, small PCB, and then we have two uh, BNC connectors, um, common ground, and right now it's configured as a through device, so that I can use this to characterize uh, the to to test whether or not the signal generator output is flat re remains flat over the frequency range and later on I, I will be swapping this uh, uh, 10.7 megahertz filter out for some other devices to test so let's get started with the uh, uh, with the actual measurement and now I just powered on my spectral analyzer uh, that's the HP 8566B and the signal generator which is a HP 8642B and let me show you the uh, setup here. So this is the board that we saw earlier, and the input comes from the uh, signal generator, and output goes to the spectral analyzer. Right now, this board is configured as a through uh, device, so it's basically shunting this uh, uh, ceramic filter. So we're just going to use this setup to take a look at the characteristics of the signal generator to make sure that the signal is flat. Because later on we'll be testing oscillators and filters with a frequency uh, range roughly from 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz, so I thought I would just first check the uh, uh, response flatness within this frequency re region. For that, I'm going to set the uh, spectral analyzer to uh, 0 to 2.5 gigahertz and set the start frequency, let's say, to be uh, 9 megahertz. Okay, 9 megahertz and uh, set the end stop frequency to be 100 megahertz okay so now you notice that uh, um, the resolution bandwidth is automatically set to 300 kilohertz so for our manual sweep to work we have to make sure that our manual sweeping uh, step is smaller than that 300 kilohertz so uh, let's take a look here and i'm going to set up the uh, the function generator, uh, the, sorry, the signal generator here. Okay, so right now it's defaulted to 100 megahertz and one, minus 140 dBm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the frequency range starting from 9 megahertz. And uh, we want to change the frequency amplitude to minus 10 dBm. So that's a reasonable. Uh, And we also want to set the uh, step size to be somewhere uh, smaller than that the 300 kilohertz uh, resolution bandwidth. So by default it's 1 megahertz, so now I'm just going to change it to uh, 100 kilohertz. I think that will be sufficient for what we're doing here. So now let's come back here and we'll see that the main tone is uh, sitting at uh, the, the far left. Uh, that's where our uh, sweeping begins and uh, then you can see some harmonics which right now we don't really uh, care about that because all we're doing is trying to make sure that uh, uh, the frequency response is reasonably flat uh, across the whole frequency range that we are interested in okay so right now let me just adjust the camera a little bit and uh, first we set the uh, this trace a to the max hold mode so that we can see um, the frequency response across this uh, 10 megahertz, uh, 9 megahertz to 100 megahertz frequency range. And let me zoom in a little bit more so we can uh, see more clearly. And now I will begin my manual sweeping.
And as you can see, that uh, the, the response is really flat, so we don't need to do any type of uh, correction on this. But if it is uh, not as flat, then what we may end up doing is to use the math function here to subtract the unevenness from a baseline and to use that to correct the display data so we can get an accurate characterization of our filters or oscillators under measurement. And as you can see, the, the speed we sweep through uh, was not very fast. Uh, so this technique is only going to be useful for characterizing uh, static bandwidth information. In other words, if you have something that is constantly changing, then uh, this is not suitable because by the time that you reach that frequency, uh, the frequency response already changed. So we can only do uh, you know, things with a fixed filter, for, for example, or a fixed oscillator. So for our first experiment, we're going to take a look at the bandpass characteristic of a 10.7 MHz ceramic filter. So for that, I replaced it through. Um, I soldered it on either side of this uh, 10.7 MHz ceramic filter. And uh, this side hooked up with the uh, input, and this side hooked up with the uh, spectral analyzer. So now let's uh, sweep through the frequency, and we'll see uh, what the response looks like. For that, I will set, uh, I'll first clear this um, and uh, set this to start at, uh, let's say, 9.5 megahertz and ending at, uh, stop at 12 megahertz. Okay, so that should be sufficient. And right now, the resolution bandwidth is uh, 30 kilohertz and that should be reasonable. So we will start our sweep, uh, let me set that here, so it should be 9.5 megahertz, okay? All right, so I will zoom in and uh, we will see the sweep, sweeping. Oh, by the way, right now I need to, uh, you see here, so right now this is actually, uh, by default it's uh, 9.5 and set to, remember we set the, uh, the resolution to be 100 kilohertz, so that won't work because right now our resolution bandwidth is only 30 uh, kilohertz. So we will move it uh, one decimal to the right. So basically, we're sweeping at uh, 10 uh, kilohertz each step. Okay. So with that set up, let's uh, zoom in again, and we'll start sweeping. So this is almost exactly what the bandpath characteristic of this 10.7 megahertz ceramic filter should look like. And as you can see, we have uh, about uh, uh, roughly five to six uh, decibel of uh, in insertion loss, uh, insertion loss, and uh, the bandwidth is roughly 600 to 700 kilohertz uh, for the passband. And outside the passband, we can see that the attenuation is more than 40 to 50 uh, dBm, so that's uh, uh, great. So for our second experiment, we will take a look at the frequency response of a uh, typical crystal oscillator. This crystal oscillator is a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator that you can find in many of your uh, microcontroller projects. and. Uh, so again, I'm using the same text fixer and just replaced that ceramic uh, filter. As you can see that the input is to one side of the uh, uh, oscillator and then the exit goes through uh, this cable to the uh, spectral analyzer. And now let's set up the uh, sweeping frequency because uh, crystal oscillators has a very, they have a very narrow uh, uh, band due to their very high Q value. So we wanted to make sure that we uh, have uh, enough resolution band, that the bandwidth is small enough so that we can actually see the peak. Because if the resolution bandwidth is too wide, we might uh, you know, uh, sweep right past it not be, and not be able to see the peak. So for that, I set the start frequency to 15.75 megahertz and the stop frequency to 16.25 megahertz. So that should give us uh, uh, enough bandwidth. And in the meantime, I'm gonna set the, uh, the generator to start sweeping at 
75 uh, megahertz. By the way, originally, uh, we, if you recall, we previously set the uh, the amplitude to minus 10 dBm, and because crystal because crystal resonate uh, crystal oscillators have a lot of input to get started and running, so they require actually very little external uh, power. So we will set that uh, uh, output power to minus 20 dBm, so that we can uh, make sure we don't overdrive the crystal. Okay. Uh, sorry, the amplitude rather is uh, 20 minus dB. Okay. Now let's come back here and we will uh, start our sweep. Again, let's set the max hold to be on, and I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay. So now let's start. And uh, by the way, what I'm doing right now is trying to set that uh, uh, frequency to uh, change by uh, less than 10 kilohertz per step because right now our resolution better with this as 10 kilohertz okay And this one probably looks a little bit surprising to you as you probably can't recognize the main peaks uh, due to the series uh, resonance and the parallel resonance. So one peak up here and one peak down here. But also you can see that there are some minute peaks here and also there's one uh, slightly larger peak here. Well, so these extra peaks were actually here also uh, uh, to be expected. These are due to the, uh, the frequency pulling effect of a crystal. So which means when you have external frequency uh, driving this crystal, uh, it might exhibit multiple resonant frequencies, but usually the, uh, the magnitude, uh, th those are smaller than your main peak. So if you design your crystal oscillator uh, properly, uh, you can make sure that uh, the crystal is actually oscillating uh, at its uh, specified frequency only. So for our last experiment, let's take a look at an LC circuit. So here, I just uh, randomly pick up a uh, capacitor, 68 picofarad, and uh, I just uh, get a, a little inductor there, so I have no idea what the uh, rest frequency is going to be. And uh, by the way, these are configured in a series. Uh, for this uh, particular experiment, you can do either series or parallel. If you're paralleling, then you need to put an uh, input uh, resistor here. But anyway, so we're doing this uh, in series. Um, so I have no idea what the actual frequency is going to be, except that it's perhaps around, I don't know, between 50 and 100 megahertz just from a previous experience with the, uh, the values. So basically, uh, because of it has a pretty, uh, you know, the Q is much lower than the, than the crystal oscillator, so we can set a relatively high resolution bandwidth and uh, uh, sweep through it quickly to so for that, let's set uh, uh, the signal back to... Uh, so right now I already set up the, uh, the band. So here I set it up to be starting at 50 and ending at 100. And so let me right now change the amplitude back to minus 10 dBm. Okay, just to give us a little uh, larger signal to look at. Okay, so now I'm gonna adjust the frequency and uh, again change it to max hold so we can take a look at what the frequency response is going to be and as i said earlier i expect a dip somewhere which okay so now let's start and as you can see from the graph here um, the resonant frequency of this um, the LC filter is uh, right at about 83, 84 uh, megahertz. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and uh, do subscribe as I have many more interesting uh, projects and uh, tutorials coming up. Thanks.